Bonjour, good morning. Uh, welcome to the, this workshop related with the telehealth activity in, in Catalonia. Uh, today we, are, uh, we will talk uh, Barbara Gillespie from, from Mobile uh, World Capital in Barcelona, Leonard uh, Janet from Techno Campus, and finally Danny Roach uh, from uh, Phobius Life, a uh, fearless company. So first of First of all, I, I want to uh, introduce myself or my, my, my company. I'm, I'm working in, in Dixolute Foundation that was a, a foundation created in 2006 and is a part of Ministry of Health uh, from the government of Catalonia. And our aim is promote and develop the use of uh, ICT technology in the health uh, uh, and social care uh, sectors. <coughs> So to give you an a over, over seat from the, the Catalan healthcare system, uh, I want to give, say you that, this, uh, that the system is a multi-provider uh, multi uh, sector, uh, in all, all of them integrated in, in a unique public network. All of these providers that we have more than one, 160 uh, different uh, organizations, uh, are free to select their own information system. And it could be a, a, some kind of issue because uh, we, at this moment, we have more than uh, 70 different uh, technology, uh, ICT technologies uh, in, 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 its, in its centers. And due to the interoperability among all of the system, uh, is, it should be guaranteed. The evolution of the use of the, the e-health technologies uh, is what, that one that you could see here. Uh, in the last, the last year, the evolution of the telediagnostic and also teleconsultant uh, growth, uh, but on the other hand, the telemonitoring is, uh, is more or less flat, and we have a, a, a good, good chance to, to improve uh, in the telemonitoring system. Also, the use of uh, the new technology tools uh, like uh, Facebook or Twitter is uh, it's 45 percent of the, the providers use that tool, and also uh, a lot of providers uh, create uh, virtual communities. Of that communities, uh, 25 percent is among uh, professionals, 11 percent is among professional and, and user or patients and only the 5% is among patients, uh, between patients. And we think that uh, that last one community that, that, uh, uh, that relates patients should to, to increase because we think that the, the relation and the, 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 the shared experience between them is, is an important, an important, an important, a good way to, to improve the communication and the responsibility among the among the the patients and and it's their healthcare. What we are do, doing in Catalonia at this moment, what we are uh, promoting is the shared medical records. That it's it's uh, we we create a virtual space where all that uh, healthcare providers share information of the of the patients patient of the patients no matter if they stay in, in their own territory or in another one. What uh, we, we have with the shared medical records is that all the health centers can put the, that information in a central repository and all the professionals, uh, no matter which kind of provider they are, can uh, access to this information and, and check it. The shared medical records it's uh, almost used at, well, 98% of the primary care have uh, access to the, the, these this medical, uh, medical records. 97% uh, of the hospitals and the last place is the mental health because they have uh, some, particulars, some particularities uh, of the, the use of introduction of the technology in, in that centers. In the in the data storage, the 
in the medical literature record, we have uh, indexed documents more or almost uh, 81 million of documents. Uh, each year, or, or the evolution of the documents published per year uh, increase, and the last, uh, the, no, the, the, in, in 2030, uh, the professionals published more than uh, 23 million. And another significant uh, figure is that the, almost all the citizens in Catalonia, uh, we can think we are seven, seven million, uh, we, ha uh, we have uh, rep reports uh, published in, the, in that medical records. <coughs> what the professionals could see uh, when they go inside the, the they can see the, the information about their patients and their main uh, issues like uh, alerts or the recent, the recent disease that they have and all kind of information. Then they go deeper in all of these blogs and, and have more information. Also for the citizens, the, we developed the personal health channels that is a virtual space where each uh, uh, citizen can go in and check their own information uh, of, of their healthcare. What we want to, to do or, or, or the aim of this, this channel is give them their information and co-responsibility, uh, have a co-responsibility in, in, the, in their own health. Through the personal health channel, the, is, is the, the use is really simple. The citizens go inside in a single thing on, uh, with a password, and they, there they can have information about uh, general information, and also they can interact with professionals uh, physicians uh, or, or have uh, applications to self-control. And also, it's what, what I say, they can share exp uh, experience with the other patients. Uh, one one snap, uh, snapshot that what they can do is, is the recent activity that they have and also who uh, watches the, their information. Also, they have uh, their own information, name, address, etc. And also, the, the clinical reports, they can ser share, um, search the, the reports uh, by, by type, center, date, and, and a speciality. Also, they can download in, in PDF uh, format. <coughs> they have information about the diagnosis uh, and using a, a color a, a color a colors they can see if the the problem is active or is not active in that moment also they can uh, have access to their uh, a prescription that is a prescription that the physician uh, give them to, uh, to to can go to the pharmacy and 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 buy the the medicaments the, the, the drugs they can download and and print it the the prescription and go to the pharmacy as i said they have information about the the vaccine, the vaccinations, and also the, this is a, the for me it's really important. This is a, one one space where uh, the the patients can have access to different applications, and that they can download to the mobile, the the, the cell phone or the tablet, and they can interact with them, and also uh, the information go directly to the the their physician and have who who can have information at, at the moment and control them at distance. And related with the general, general uh, situation of the, the health, the e-health e sector in Catalonia. I, I will continue with the explanation of what, what we are doing in Catalonia. Uh, and uh, I will focus our presentation on uh, two projects, the clinical dictionary for e-salud, for e-health, and the uh, wi uh, project, the uh, uh, workflow for integration of uh, healthcare uh, systems. Both of those projects are related with uh, interoperability. As uh, Enric uh, said, it's uh, very important in Catalonia to guarantee that uh, interoperability is fully functional. So uh, we work on two 
uh, kind of interoperabilities. The first one, the clinical dictionary, uh, is related with uh, semantic interoperability. Uh, the clinical dictionary is um, engaged in a transversal and strategic program called in Catalonia uh, eHealth, eSalud, uh, that uh, aims to, to transform the um, healthcare assistance model using uh, IT technologies. Uh, their objectives are uh, to be sure that uh, we keep uh, all the vocabularies that are at the moment in use, um, to guarantee that we allow uh, semantic inter interoperability, and uh, to provide an homogeneous uh, framework base to be sure that everything is going to be the most standard as possible. Uh, the clinical uh, dictionary is managed by a permanent commission. It's a multidisciplinary team uh, where uh, the, the center of competencies of integration uh, is in the engage of the management of that uh, commission. And uh, that commission uh, indicates which are the priorities and domains uh, to work on and to uh, progress working to be sure that the project, the clinical dictionary, is uh, alive. Um, the, the idea is that in the Catalan uh, health systems, uh, the, the clinical dictionary could be some kind of uh, a pilot to be used uh, in the Spanish Ministry of uh, Health. So the idea is to show them which are the results of the clinical dictionary to uh, try to use that solution in the Spanish uh, health systems. The clinical dictionary is based on Znomet CT as an ontology. Uh, why is Nomad City? Uh, because uh, Nomad City has an uh, interrelated uh, concept with descriptions in different languages. Uh, we can add new components. We can create uh, the Catalan extensions with uh, some uh, new uh, concepts and the relation between the international version and uh, the way we use those in uh, Catalonia. Uh, we, we use subsets of uh, Nomad City to group components uh, by domains, so we can focus on the on different domains to, to be sure that uh, the users on that domain use properly the ontology. And uh, the clinical dictionary uh, contains a mapping between other uh, catalogs, classifications, as LOING, ICD-9, 10, uh, ISCO, or to use Nomad City. Um, currently, we are working on uh, five, six domains, laboratory, clinical variables, uh, diseases, clinical reports, uh, but we, are, uh, uh, we have the intention to include uh, other domains. Uh, you can see uh, on the right, um, the web space of the clinical dictionary where information about the project uh, can be uh, fine and uh, users can know which are the progress of the project. In uh, that uh, project, uh, the CCI, the uh, Center of Competencies of Integration, is uh, mainly uh, working on the uh, team that uh, focus which are the domains to work on and on the integration of the uh, SNOMED CT ontology and uh, its integration with the uh, IT tool uh, clinical dictionary. The second part of my, present, uh, my presentation will be on the workflow for uh, healthcare institutions, uh, workflow per institutions sanitarias, WIFIs. This is a roadmap to uh, standardize uh, healthcare environments which is the starting point. The starting point is uh, we have uh, many different uh, institutions and organizations with uh, different ways to uh, represent and store uh, medical information. Uh, up to today, uh, when those institutions want to share uh, a procedure, maybe a laboratory testing, maybe a scheduling in an agenda because there is a patient referral or something like that, they use a, a 
a private and uh, own uh, procedure to share that information. So if an organization is sharing information with two other organizations, maybe uh, they are using two different uh, protocols, procedures to share that information. Which is the purpose of uh, WIFIS? So the purpose is to be sure that this is a standardized and uh, everyone use the same uh, solution. Uh, the project uh, starts at the Oficina de Standards Interoperabilitat from the uh, Tech Salud Foundation and the uh, Health Care Department of the Generalitat de Catalonia. And uh, a pilot was uh, implemented in uh, San Jaume Hospital of Calais. The idea uh, is to be sure that all healthcare processes are uh, standardized in the way they share information. Uh, the starting point was there are too many point-to-point -point connections uh, and we want to go to a multi-point connection. Uh, the administrative process uh, used to be uh, hard because uh, each organization uh, has uh, its own uh, processes and uh, there were not written uh, healthcare processes so uh, you don't know exactly how to do uh, things in that uh, sharing of information. The, the purpose of the WIFIS project is to be sure that uh, we work in a uh, SOA-oriented um, uh, procedure and we work on uh, patient referrals, on laboratory testing or, and on appointments. Uh, the first uh, step was to work uh, in a multidisciplinary team with uh, the institutions you can see here in the San Jaume Hospital of Calaya pilot. And the role of the uh, CCI uh, is in two uh, parts. The first one uh, in the designing of that interoperability framework. So we participated on the definition of the framework. And uh, in a second step, we uh, advise and participate in the implementation phase. So we uh, are close to the IT departments of uh, healthcare centers to uh, help them, to advise them on the uh, implementation of that integration uh, process. Uh, the first we done was to decide which uh, clinical domain uh, to model at the first step. Uh, to decide which processes to work on and uh, to decide uh, which standards and semantics uh, to, to use. HL7, DICOM, SNOMED CT, and we work on uh, patient referrals and appointment. Uh, we can, as an example, so we define how to uh, do a patient referral request, how to change the patient referral request, how to schedule, uh, uh, and to know which was the date scheduled by another center when we uh, refer a patient to that center. Uh, and we uh, work on an implementation guide. Uh, what is the implementation guide? It's a document to be used by the uh, healthcare centers to know how to integrate uh, their system with the WIFIS uh, project. Here we can see a messaging template on HL7. And uh, the results are, the project is validated, uh, so it works, so the design seems to be good, and the implementation uh, also. Uh, the um, uh, project uh, shows it's uh, efficient, so we reduce the cost in uh, uh, those uh, processes between uh, centers, and we are increasing the number of domains to work on the WIFIS projects. Um, just to, to, end my pre to finish my presentation, uh, WIFIS is a reference interoperability framework, so it's uh, the framework to be used by uh, centers in Catalonia. We work with an insurance group, uh, MC Mutual, that is uh, the first uh, private institution that use the WIFIS model as a framework for their uh, patient referral with their uh, providers. And uh, the, the standard uh, office uh, define 
the procedure, an official approval procedure to be sure that uh, healthcare centers are uh, wife is uh, compliant. And uh, just uh, the idea is to uh, show that uh, you can have a, a ROI quite easily using that kind of interoperability solutions. Thank you. Good morning to everybody. Thank you to the organizers for the opportunity of presenting um, our institution. Our institution is called Mobile World Capital. It is a public foundation which is focused on the development and promotion of mobile technologies in different emerging areas. The area I'm going to present today is the, uh, the one related to healthcare, what we call the M Health Competence Center. And uh, the first question that I would like to put on the table when we talk about M Health is what is the real added value that uh, M Health provides to the uh, healthcare system? So there's uh, two basic answers to this question. The first one is that uh, we try to increase the quality of life of citizens by the use of mobile technologies. And the second one is uh, that we need to make the systems sustainable. As you know, there is a big problem, not only uh, in Spain, not only in Europe, but around the world, which is related to the budget and the cuts that the healthcare system um, are been uh, suffering uh, for the past years. And we really need to find alternative measures and systems that can um, still uh, help us to maintain the quality of the healthcare systems as we have uh, understood it today. So um, I, I brought you a very interesting uh, document uh, that was published uh, last June 2013. This research uh, document was done by Price Waterhouse Coopers, um, uh, asked by GSMA, and uh, the the uh, big conclusion or the big uh, highlight item that I would like to do, to um, to share with you is that uh, if mobile health was deployed in Europe, by 2017, the savings uh, were calculated to be 99 billion euros. I'm not uh, pretty sure about how these calculations were done, but what I know is that it doesn't matter if it's 19 or 50 or um, 100. What it is is that we do have a great opportunity of uh, getting uh, cut savings by the use of mobile technologies, and this is the big message. And um, also, when we look a little bit uh, into the details of this study, we see that uh, 185 million users could benefit from those solutions based on mHealth, and that most of those savings go to a very specific group that we have been um, listening to many uh, speakers talking uh, during the past two days, which is the group of wellness and prevention. So the patient is taking a very active role. We need people to take care and to be able to uh, manage their own uh, situation and their own diseases and to be much more proactive. Uh, so uh, the current M health services that are being used for uh, health management are basically six different groups. Three of those groups are led by the individual and those groups are basically wellness service, our uh, treatment service and monitoring services, the various standard uh, services you uh, know as uh, telehealth, just keeping patients being monitored through devices and sensors at home. And the other group uh, is composed by uh, the ones who are led by the healthcare provider and those services are basically prevention, uh, diagnostic and healthcare system strengthening, which is uh, all the transversal services that help to uh, the global uh, system. So, uh, if you look at the ecosystem and M Health, there is a huge amount of players and uh, stakeholders that uh, have something to, to say and uh, provide an added value. So, what we did was to uh, try to divide those uh, stakeholders into uh, five groups. The first group uh, would be uh, the financial banking. 
uh, that's to say everything that has to deal uh, with sustainability of the system and that would go uh, to the governments and insurance who uh, need to uh, keep the cost uh, but at the same time want to provide a better uh, provision of services to the citizen. Second group would be that one related to healthcare delivery, and it is composed as of the hospitals and clinics and the pharma companies. And this is very interesting. The pharma companies, as uh, most of you know, have come to a point where they need to do something uh, about their business. Uh, there's not enough with the traditional uh, business that they've been uh, doing for the past decades, for many reasons. And they are starting to look for other opportunities and other fields where they can uh, somehow provide a collaborative um, uh, added value to the drugs and um, the, 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 the drugs they are selling to the hospitals. And this is one of the sectors in health where they see that mobile technologies can, can provide um, something different, something of more value to their products. And the last group would be um, the one related to connectivity. And this is where companies uh, are basically located uh, is technological providers, all the hardware and software companies, and also the telecom operators. And the telecom operators are the other players that have to uh, define what is the role they want to play. Either they can stay as they are now, just as a basic um, um, player who just give you communication uh, channel, or they can uh, provide a much more active role um, helping to uh, provide interoperability, helping to provide additional platforms, uh, services, uh, etc. Very good. So what we do from uh, our foundation basically is to try to be the channel between the offer and the demand. We have uh, a major gap. We have on one side all the companies, all the industry that have great solutions, very innovative solutions. And for some reason, they are not selling, they are not getting uh, to the final user and to the market. And on the other side, we have all the healthcare institutions that do have problems, uh, they have a lot of needs, but they have no idea what to buy and to whom. So what we are doing is trying to align all the different players and try to make sure that the uh, benefit for the user and for the citizen is there, that they know what is going on in the different uh, mobile technologies and that they uh, somehow um, we raise awareness for those citizens. And um, in that sense, we have deployed uh, what we call the strategic plan. That plan has seven main uh, action lines that we are focusing on. Uh, very briefly, I'll go through them. The first one is the line uh, related to standards and interoperability. We are working very closely with Tixalut uh, in this uh, ETAM because we do believe that we need to have a baseline, we need to have the right infrastructure uh, to build upon all the services and applications. And this is a matter of having uh, the different systems being interoperable and being able to provide the professionals to have access independently of where they are and when they want to get access to. Second activity is uh, obviously chronic disorders. Uh, there's no need for me to tell you how a um, uh, big problem uh, the, the, the chronic patients and the big burden for the uh, healthcare systems. We really need to give support and uh, try to find out how mobile technologies can uh, increase the quality of life and uh, can decrease costs for the health healthcare system. The third line is uh, everything related to uh, wellness and prevention. As I told you before, it is uh, important not only to treat the patients when they are already sick, but to prevent the appearance of, of certain diseases. And uh, we are promoting healthy lifestyle while trying to make people aware how important it is to do sport, to uh, eat correctly, and to um, have healthy lifestyles. The fourth line is uh, related to mental health. We in Catalonia are very active in this field. Uh, there's more than 40 projects going on at the moment in this field. And uh, we have started to see the uh, great benefits that uh, mobile technologies could have uh, for uh, this area. Uh, fifth one is mobile pharma. I already talked to you about that and we are gonna have a very interesting um, conversation after this workshop, specifically on the pharma industry. 
Next one is uh, the one of uh, secure access or MI identification to the personal health folder. How can we ensure that citizens have access to their uh, personal clinical information independently if they are using the mobile phone or the tablet or whatever other mobile device? And the last one is uh, training. Um, training is important for professionals and also for citizens. Let me give you a very uh, quick example. Uh, if you go to the doctor and you feel okay and suddenly because of the testing, uh, the doctor tells you that you have diabetes, the shock is so uh, big when he tells you that, that everything that comes after uh, this, you don't remember anything at all. So you get home and your family asks you, how are you? Oh, well, I am a diabetic. And what do you have to do? I don't remember. I have no idea what the doctor told me that I have to do. So we need to create those uh, central repositories with data which is of use for the patient. And the same thing for the professional in the sense that that professional uh, needs to understand what are the benefits of this type of tools. They are tools. They are not trying to substitute any kind of the work that the professional is doing, but the professional needs good tools to uh, increase their everyday work and to uh, provide them with additional features. Um, so, last comment I wanted to uh, share with you is to invite you to access to our website. Last February, we launched uh, the I'm Health website. The URL, you can see it on the top right corner, is mobilehealthglobal.com. So we created this website for the community. Uh, we want you to be active uh, in the website. We want you to uh, send us news information and any uh, relevant um, issues that you might think are important to share with the rest of uh, the stakeholders. In this website, uh, we have a catalog with more than 250 uh, applications that are already in the market. And we are trying to have a good uh, structure by pathology and area of interest so that anyone can enter in the website and look, for example, uh, for the cardiovascular applications that are already um, being run um, today. Then there is uh, also, we are putting on a couple of uh, groups of discussions uh, being led by uh, key leaders uh, in each one of the fields. And uh, we are going to provide the opportunity to those uh, small and medium enterprises as well as the big ones to uh, upload their solutions, their applications, their activity so that the rest of um, the community can have an idea of what is going on at the moment and the mHealth field. This is uh, not a local website, it's an international website. It is actually available in three languages, Spanish, English, and Catalan. So I welcome all of you to uh, register, it's free, <laughs> so you have no um, option uh, not to, to, to get in. Get in, register, take a look at it, and come back to us with any comments, suggestion uh, that you might have to um, make it better, basically, and uh, make it a website for uh, all of us, uh, a useful tool. So thank you very much for your attention. I will explain you really briefly <clears throat> my experience, and <laughs> that actually it's very related what Barbara just told us. And well, first of all, let me explain you how all begins my personal experience i was afraid of flying as many people i was i had a phobia many years i spent without being able to take a plane even i i had to for professional or, or personal reasons and one, one one day i realized that many people as me also suffered from from a phobia or from a situations that makes them feel anx anxious and I realized that, like me, they didn't seek for professional help. They just avoid those situations. So um, I start thinking that maybe we could offer, or it would be nice to have an, a solution that everybody could, could, could have at home, maybe through the mobile phone. And this idea was starting to crystallize and finally, it, it became a, a, 
and a startup. We are in a startup. We are the, the private uh, part of these ecosystems, the e-health. We, we just found the, the company eight months ago. And we started, first of all, talking with, with people, with people like me, to see what, what uh, were the, the, their thoughts. And also with physicians, with therapists. And we realized that many, 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 many of the most part of this whole group of people who suffer from anxiety-related disorders, such as phobias, OCD, or, or stress disorders, stress-related disorders like post-traumatic stress disorders, all these people mm, didn't, didn't go to the therapist. Only 10% of those seek for treatment. And therapists knew it, I mean, and besides that, one, one conclusion we came up with was that things were changing. The economical crisis, the situation in society was changing the way that therapists had to, to provide their services. Actually, people, uh, there, there were more dropouts of the therapy. I mean, people couldn't afford going each week to the therapist. So they drop out. So they, they had they had to the therapists had to came up with new ways of providing the, the services. For example, they give their to their patients some homeworks to do at home, or they started to make uh, therapy through video conferencing. So things were changing, and we we kind of envisioned it, uh, a, a change of paradigm in this way. So. We started to work with a technology, mobile-based, to help these people who suffer from anxiety disorders and also the therapists who wanted to, to adapt to this new situation. So we started to work with 3D developers and we, we developed a technology, mobile-based, based, that allows us to to create, to perform virtual reality environments based on two main technologies, virtual reality and augmented reality, that is a bit different. And we apply it, we apply it to the treatment of mental diseases because mm, it's surprisingly, but it's surprising, but even although virtual reality is the most effective way to treat this kind of diseases. There is a lot of research, and actually it's been currently used in many, many, many fields. For example, treating veterans of war in US. Although this is the best way to treat these diseases, and actually patients prefer it, it's really, really low use. The, the, the adoption of these technologies in between the, the therapies is really low because because two main reasons. The complexity of the, of the systems, of the devices till now were huge. And the cost of these devices were also very, very, very big. So we, we tried to, to solve these two main problems by making it, by making it uh, friendly user, because it's an app, and make it it affordable because you just need an, a standard smartphone and a headset device that we currently 3D print and the cost is just uh, 20 or 30 bucks dollars. So we, we solved these two, these two main reasons, these two main issues. And what we can offer to the, to the psychologists, to the psychologists and psychiatrists, is a new range of possibilities to, to provide the service. Because we provide for one side, we provide a tool for using in the office, but in the other hand, we have an online platform that allows to make these treatments remotely with the patient at home, or, and, and in between these two, extremes, we have an all range of possibilities to personalize the needs of the patient 
maybe you can give some recorded instructions for the patient to use it at home, or we can have half sessions online, half sessions supervised. So we have a continuous gr range of possibilities. And I don't know if we have time to show you a little video, but that you probably have already seen. So thank you very much. Thank you very much for, for to be here. And I hope that we can give you some, some flavor that what is going on in, in related with the health, uh, telehealth care uh, activity in, in Catalonia. And thank you very much. Thank you.